Tell me what you see when you look at me. Do you see another brother lost in these streets looking for his soul? Trying to find my soul. Or do you see another brother searching for lost souls in these streets? A street soldier. A street soldier. Here to help you get that chip off your shoulder, warm your colder days, and sober your drunken ways, and find a way to help you get over these hurdles placed in our path. Yeah. And this is not meant to amuse you. This is for all those who have questions but are afraid to ask. I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. Times get hard, you lose your way. Open your mind and hear what I say. This is a message for the hard and the soft. To those who tune in weekly and to those who keep an eye out for 8 p.m. on Sundays and turn their radios off. The truth hurts. The cloth has been pulled. We're walking around half dead. Use this show as your IV. Alive and free is a new movement. We've achieved self-destruction. A street soldier promotes self-improvement. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. This is Mom. This is Women's History Month. So joining us. Are and wave your hand to talk about two generations of Alive and Free Omega Bears Club Boys Club is Kaidi. Hello. Smith. 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 There she is. There she is. Dr. Kayla Regis, her daughter. Hey. Wave your hands in the air like you just ain't there, okay? <laughs> we have Yvette Gordon. Girl, we can't hear what you're saying. You're on mute. <laughs> hello everyone hello hey, hello hey. and i think your daughter is there so yes we, you can't see her yeah i'm here oh. everyone oh okay i was wondering are we gonna get to see you calicia are you are you gonna see you start your no, video no i'm sorry i'm in the car right now y'all that's all right <laughs> we've seen cars before all right yeah thank you for from joining and, and let me just tell everybody <laughs> we're on the west coast uh uh Kaidi and and kayla are in uh alabama central time and and uh yvette and Kalicia are actually in atlanta uh even though they're you know are California. you two together no, we, no, we're not. We're oh, in opposite not places there? right now. But oh, I'm okay. in the car, so I don't understand why she can't be in the car. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just checking. All right, Dr. Marshall, go ahead. I'm gonna. I'm gonna okay. Meet myself. Right. So let me just let me just say, um, Katie Smith is a graduate of Alabama State, 1997. That's how far back we go. And, uh, her daughter, Kayla, is a graduate of University of Alabama, Birmingham, 2014. Yvette Gordon is a graduate of Clark Atlanta University in 1996. Now I wanted to say y'all old, but, but <laughs> you are to me. But don't tell me I'm old because I was always old, so that's okay. <laughs> and <laughs> her daughter, Kalicia Eliana. Kalicia is a junior. Is you a, you're a junior, Kalicia, at Clark, because years go by so fast. I can't figure it out. Is you a junior? Yeah, I'm a junior. All right. All right. All right. All right. So let's let's start with the let's let's start with the moms in the room. And first of all, I, I seen, you know, I see you that often, but Katie, I haven't seen you in so long. Girl, you yeah. looking good? You looking well, good? Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you looking good. You looking good. I gotta say one more time. So Let's start with you, and this is two generation things. I want to get into that, but let's talk about a little bit, and we'll go to Yvette too. You guys are close in errors. You're both in that, you know, in time. I, I, did you guys know each other when you were both in, in, in the organization? Because your graduation dates are a year apart. No, I do not remember her at all, mm -hmm. but hi, sister. Hey. 
<laughs> you're right around the corner. <laughs> right, right, right exactly. Yeah, yeah. You went off. One went, one went to Clark. One went to Alabama, Alabama State. And you, you remember, you kind of you went with Stacy. You know, which you know, of course, I remember it well. But just talk about when you came to the club, what it was like back then, in particular, what brought you there. Uh, and then why you pick the school you pick? As I always, you know, why did you do that? So you first. So I, I probably didn't know a bit offhand because I came in through the Oakland side. You know, wow. back then, that, right. was, that was Dr. Marshall, you trying to get, get it going. And yeah. we were, there were so many of us, I think you were trying to reach at one time, yeah. but the net would just... He's just trying to corral us in. And so um, I went to uh, school in Union City. I went to Logan and um, my best friend, uh, Anina was there and she started telling me about the group. We had graduated, but like I had a, a crazy childhood with my mom and um, my dad. And so, you know, there was a lot of, um, I was in a very broke, I came from a, not that they wanted to be broken, but my parents were broken mm -hmm. is really what it was. My dad was a heroin addict. My mom was an immigrant and it was just too much. It, it was the seventies. It was just the seventies. And so um, I grew up in East Oakland and um, you know, my parents didn't hide a lot of things for me. So I just kind of grew up in a certain lifestyle where, you know, my dad was in and out of jail, watching him hop in and out of windows, literally watching TV on a black and white screen. And my dad's robbing the man next door. I'm watching him just break in the house, you know, just came from a pretty rough um, environment in East Oakland. And then as I got older, my mother decided that she wanted to go back to her country. And so she left for a what while. Kind of that? Yeah, but She's from Cape Verde. They're islands on the west coast of Africa. And so she decided that she wanted to go home. And that's really kind of like up to that, mo that point, it was just a dysfunctional family. That's pretty much what I was in. But then when she left, um, I stayed with my uh, stepfather who was on crack. and. Uh, I want to, I like to say right at that time, about 14, 15 years old, that's kind of when I lost any guidance or, or mentorship. It was one of those things where I will, will wake up and, and my stuff is missing because he took it to sell, sell it on the street and, you know, couldn't go to my biological father because he was in and out of prison. He was in San Bruno all the time. You know, it was that kind of thing. I didn't have a mother. So um, what do you do at that time? You look for people to love you. And so I ended up getting pregnant with Kayla, who's who's here tonight. And so um, got pregnant with her. And thank God for a teacher at Logan, Miss Allen, Dorothy Allen. That woman, that woman fought to keep me in school to the point of washing clothes for me. She made sure that I ate food um, and I just kind of bounced around for a really long, you know, for a period of time, I bounced around between people's houses, graduated high school, had Kayla, you know, wasn't, wasn't emotionally stable and trying to figure out uh, what's my next move. And because my, my household was nothing but hustlers, that's what I did. And I bumped into a friend one day and she said, look, you know, you, you're going to find yourself in jail or dead. You're going to find yourself somewhere um, because of the things that I was doing on the street. And um, she said, I want you. I'm dating this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Marsha knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm what me? <laughs> no, what? what you? She says, I'm, you know, I'm dating this guy and he's meeting at this, this abandoned warehouse. And I think, I think you, you know, I think you you should go. And I was like, I'm not going to no warehouse. And at that time, I didn't even have Kayla. Kayla was, Kayla's grandparents, praise God for them. They were constantly coming to the rescue to take her uh, and keep her because I I was so unstable. And um, 
And so uh, she said, you should come. And I came and I think it was Q. Is that, was that his name, Dr. Marshall? Q, Q. oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Q. so I came. I forget Kwame enough. It's better known yeah. as Q. And so I went and we were in West Oakland and some little raggedy blown windows, <laughs> blown out building, like, like we just squatting or something. And, and we, we went in there and they were talking and I was like, yeah, I'm not trying to hear that noise. You know, I was doing what I was doing. And, um, one day he asked me about my dad and my dad actually was out of prison at the time. Um, and he came and uh, he sat down and he kind of talked about, you know, what his life was. And uh, I just remember one day he said, I want you to go over to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in Patrail Hill. Y'all forgive me because it's been years. Patrail, Patrail Hill. And, and he was like, I want you to go over there. And, and I want, I want you to listen to what they have to say, because I think you should go to school. And you mm -hmm. asked me, Dr. Marshall, how did I pick college? I never picked college. See, mm -hmm. that was an older generation of Omega. We were on the streets. We weren't thinking about school. School was a different world that we watched that on TV, but we, we just, I never had any plans to go to college, um, as I was just telling Kayla yesterday, on my father's side, I'm the first one to graduate high school. So I, I just didn't have, you know, I had a baby. I didn't, you know, I my 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 dad was was a street hustler. My stepfather, um, you know, he committed suicide. It was just I I was such a broken kid that it, I didn't care about me. I didn't care about you. I didn't care about nobody. So stop right, there. stop right there. I want to hear all of it. That's what that's where you were. Because I was curious as to how you found us. And I wanted to, I, I wanted to, I wanted to hear that and where you were. And I had an idea about where you were when you when when you when you we finally met you. Um we're gonna come back to that. And uh let's go to the other mom who was close to you really in the, at that time, Yvette. Um, where is she? Yes, she is. You bet. I'm and here. I'm sorry, but this is for the public. How did you come to to the club? Well, I came to the club from various members. Um, Jermaine for one, and Jermaine King, as well as Mr. Preston. He came to Lincoln High School where I was at. Um, I went back to Lincoln my senior year of high school from Fremont High School in Oakland due to some trouble I had gotten into. And when Mr. Preston came to the club, he talked about Omega and between him and Jermaine, just the knowledge that Omega was giving me, I said, I need to get up here and see what it's about. And once I stepped foot into the neighborhood house, I couldn't go nowhere. I traveled from Oakland to San Francisco on a regular basis to be a part of the club. Even when we had the earthquake in 1989, why was I trying to get to Omega Boys Club to the neighborhood house doing an earthquake? On the bus, crying, scared, but I'm going to Omega. I got to get to my meeting. That's how much Omega meant to me, just the everything they instilled in me during the time. Um, our Black history and I was into some stuff in Oakland, but it wasn't as bad as a lot of people, but it was enough to prevent me from possibly being who I am today. And I'm thankful for Omega. And once I went on a college tour, it was like, okay, no, I'm going to Atlanta, I'm going to school. This is where it is to see all my peers getting their education and just striving to be better citizens in society, it, I had to do it. And that's what brought me to Omega. My Jermaine King and Mr. Preston. Uh, uh, both of you, do you remember the ages you were when you first, when you, when you first came? I was, I was 16. Okay. So when I first came to college, I mean, to Omega, I was 19. Okay, 19, and you bet you were 16, right? 16, yes. Um, I, 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 and 
initially, first meet, you walk in there and you know, you let, let me back up. Do you remember what year? Because I gave you your graduation years, but that's like four years later. So do you remember the year 90, was it 92, 93, 94? Uh, Taylor? 92. 92, okay. And, and what about it you? It was 80, 889 for me. 89, okay. So this is, this is briefly three to five years, well, two to five years after we started. So what was your impression, both of you, the, the, the first time you walked in, those first early meetings, what, what, what was that like? It was awesome for me just due to the fact of the Black history that Omega gave me being in the public schools within the Bay Area, not having that illustrated within our history class. I can remember being in class at Fremont with Andre Akins yeah. and the teacher teaching us and him coming out like, wait a minute, hold on. What about Malcolm X? <laughs> you know, I'm not listening to this and he got kicked out of class. <laughs> like, tell me about my people. Everything you're talking about, I really don't care. But being in Omega, it gave you your black history again things that we weren't being introduced to in public schools. And that's one of the other things that really drawn me to Omega. Our people, we have a lot of history with our people and that's important. And to know it is to grow in life. And that's, that's my family for life. <laughs> hey, Katie, what about you? What was that, what was your impressions of those? Um, kind of the same. I think um, since, again, I came through the Oakland side, it was kind of like I wasn't really trying to hear it at first. I mean, being honest, I wasn't. I mean, I was I was educated because, I mean, I we, you know, Union City, Logan, we had a Black history class. So, you know, and I was, I should say, I was educated to that extent, but um I think at first it was hard for me. Mm -hmm. It was really hard. Like my mom and dad were always, you know, they would go to the Black Panther meetings in Oakland. Like they were always, I would hear around the house, you know, about Marcus Garvey. I would hear, you know, that was just kind of how my parents were. But I think when I first got there, it was just so hard for me to sit still and understand the significance. But once I kept coming because I didn't initially get the warm and fuzzy. It was no wow factor. It was kind of like, man, I don't feel like doing this. I'm about to go write these bad checks over here because I got something I got to get. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. I was just, you know, I got some orders that I need to fill here. That was just, you know, I was in my own, my own world, but I kept coming because there was something that was being said that I read that resonated, that I heard in the group amongst my peers at that time. Right. I heard my voice. I heard my cry. And that's what just, it was kind of, just like Yvette said, it was like a family that I didn't understand that I was becoming a member of. Right. And so right. I kept going. Right. And, 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 and I guess, Moving forward, yeah, everybody has, when they come in, they got to say, how'd your daughters get there? Let's go to the daughters. Let's go to the daughters, both of them. Um, and, and daughters, as you talk about how you got there, uh, did you hear about us from your mom, I guess? Let's, let's, start, let's start with you, Dr. Kayla. Let's start with you. Um, mm -hmm. And it's funny because see, I remember all of you coming. So it's a trip. I mean, I'm looking at you and I'm like, and I remember when I first find out that that's your mama. Oh my God, that's your mama. It just blows my mind. But Kayla, how did you get there? So I definitely got there from my mom. She came to visit um, one time. My mom had this way that she would take these random trips to California when something in her spirit told her something was wrong. So she came um, to visit like randomly and um, 
she was staying with my godmom, and that's when we kind of had a talk about Omega Boys Club and what it was. And so um, I think on my first visit, I can't remember if my godmom took me or if my aunt took me. Um, but I went um, after school. We were driving from Antioch. I went to Deer Valley High. And um, I just remember when I got there, in my mind, I was in my mind, when my mom told me about it and everybody was talking about it, it just seemed like something extra to do, to be honest with you. So when I got in there, um, I really didn't know what my purpose was for being there at that time. To me, it was just like after school class or something like that initially. So I wasn't like, we had to take that commute from Antioch to San Francisco and then we had to drive back. Like I wasn't really thrilled in the beginning to be, to go. I just knew that my mom told me she needed, that she wanted me to go and I needed to be in the program. And so that's kind of how I ended up there initially. What, uh, what did you think? Well, you, you said what you thought, why am I here? Right. The, the, what, what, so, what caught like, on <laughs> for so you? So I, I was, I went a couple of times. I think it was that um, it was when Miss Estelle would like put on videos that tied into maybe it was like a movie or a video or something that was from way back when, like before my time, if you will. And but it resonated with coachisms and things that you all were teaching us and pouring into us. And I just really thought that that was neat how she could take something so simple as a snippet of a movie and we would literally dissect it into what it meant in today's world with what we were dealing with as teenagers, um, especially as young African Americans. And so that's kind of really what caught my mind. Um, and really, it really captured me after a couple of visits. Kalisa, you are the youngest of the group. Um... And you're you're still in college. Uh, how did you end up there? Did you did your mom drag you in by the ear, or, or did she say go? And, and did you hear about the club as you were growing up? Um, no, my mom definitely dragged me there since she'd been there. She had made my brother go there, but he didn't stick to it. So there was me. They made it to the end. <laughs> so what did you? You got go. You got to talk more than that. What what? <laughs> What what did you? I always think the hardest people, you know, are the ones that 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 are pushed to go, uh, or assigned to go, and and nobody stays unless we make a connection for them. So, uh, was the, I know your mom wanted you to come, but did you? When did you decide, or did you decide that it was good for you yourself to come? You're on mute. Um, I knew it was good for me, but like my mom, she was forced me, honestly. Like it was times where I was like, dang, I really do not feel like going to the city. Like, I don't know, like, cause I live in Pittsburgh, so I would be catching the bus, the bar, then getting on board, then getting on the train, then one to make us. And sometimes I'd be like, dang, like I'm low-key getting sad going here because it's just such a drag and I just came from school. But after a while, like it was cool. Like it will always be like a drag. But then it's like once I got there, it was like, you know, I love it. Especially the talks with um Jack and stuff. So it all worked out. We've been at this for 34 years now. And um I always say times have changed, but times haven't changed. So, uh, Kaidi and and um, Lord, where you you pop out there, bet. I mean, your big thing when you got your daughters, you don't want your daughters as moms. Your thing is, man, I'm gonna, you know, I don't want my daughter to go through what we went through. Right, that's the first thing. Sort of describe what was like back then in the '90s. Can you can you just sort of describe what was going on in the '90s? Um, that you were really concerned about for your children, both of your daughters? What, what was it like back then? For me, it was a lot. You know, growing up in Oakland, I did come from a two-parent home, and they always tried to teach me the right things to do, but 
I grew up in the city, so the fast life was something that attracted me. Like, I want the fast money. Let's go get it. However, with my daughter and my son, after being in that lifestyle and realizing this really is not the way to go, there are other ways that you can become a successful person and have the things you want in life to show them a different route. And it was a challenge a lot of times, especially when their dad was a hustler, you know, but at the end of the day to understand that fast money is not always good money. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to maneuver in life and be patient and wait for the things that you want. And I'm just happy and thrilled that both of my children, even though my son did not stick with Omega, he understood that. And my daughter, following my footsteps and going to Clark, it's a blessing mm -hmm. because they could be caught up in this life right now and all type of nonsense that's not necessary for them to be in to live life as opposed to what they think it should be and what society has it to be. You have all this glamor and all of this glory with the fast life, with the rap industry, social media, and things of that nature, but it really isn't the way to go. There is a better life out here for you to take if you just be patient and put forth the effort, get educated, and just know education is the key to life. Kai, what was it? What was it? Mm -hmm. Because as much as this, this is an Omega story, this is a mom-daughter story, right? <laughs> this, is, this is about, I got this child, and I'm, and I'm a dad, so, you know, and Mrs. Tell's a mom, and, and Ann is listening, because she, how old is Evelyn Ann? <laughs> three, so she's three, like, y'all. I'm taking like, notes. <laughs> this is a mom story. Well, for you, what was that, and we've heard a lot, but that era, the 90s, you know, as they called it, uh, what were you worried about <laughs> when it came to your daughter? Um, I will tell you, Dr. Marshall, I, again, I mean, just keep being transparent. You know, I had Kayla Young. So, so keep in mind when I, when I came to Omega, Kayla was already here. She was already here. So when I talked to her about going to Omega, I was already a college graduate. Mm -hmm. I had already finished school, been pat, you know, so I, I want to say that my big worry for Kayla was that I knew that she was going to be damaged because I had to make a decision to leave to pursue education or try to figure out a way for a better life for us. And in that process, I wasn't stable. So a lot of her upbringing was still at home in California while I was here. And I think I had that's why I wanted her to go to Omega because I knew that Omega in my mind at that time was Omega sent me to school and, and through, through the fact of by, by way of educating me and elevating me and giving me a skill set and some tools to use, I was able to carve this life. And so I wanted that for her because I knew that she was going to be damaged because I wasn't there when she was little, like I needed to be. And so what helped me, I felt like will help her. Mm -hmm. You need to go to college. You need mm -hmm. to go to college. Um, because college gave me all these things that all these tools that I could work with to build. And I want you to build and look at her. She done built. I just told her today, you good and grown. You make more than I make. You're <laughs> good and dang grown. Like, you know, you run in circles around me, you got a doctor in front of your name, you know, but I, Omega gave me that, just like Yvette said, education was the key. From the daughter's <laughs> lens. Thank you, baby. From the daughter's lens. Now you're hearing this. These are your moms. Kids do what they want to do. Dr. Dr. Kayla and Kalisa, well, wherever you are, uh, <laughs> you know, what do you think about what your mom, you know, was telling you all these years and worried about you all these years and so on? And you know, what I'm saying this to see, to, to me, this is fascinating 
because first of all, I got to say to both of you, thank you for taking on taking the job on of being a great mom, despite whatever you're doing. I got to say that first. There's nothing, look, the, the toughest job in the world is being a parent. The most important job is being a parent. And, and thank you. And the proof is right here, right? Uh, we just wanted to, to help with that. But let me hear from the, the daughters. You know, yeah, mom, yeah, mom, want here. What was it like for you hearing this and then worrying about you? And then let me start with Kalicia. So, because, you know, she's the youngest of the group and she's still being in this room. Yeah, my mom was in my ear. But go ahead, dear, Miss Jordan. <laughs> What was the question you made, Dr. Marshall? I'm sorry. <laughs> my child. Oh, you in trouble? See. Oh, no, listen, y'all. Right? <laughs> I told you, my mom forced me to go to Omega, so my mom forced me to do this interview. I don't know why she agreed to this. I'm out right now. So y'all got to bear with me, okay? I'm sorry, no, y'all. We know. We are, it's all right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we we appreciate you doing this in <laughs> right. What's it like? What's it like as your mother is guiding you through this process and moving you further along? Because you are the youngest one. So you haven't got to the other side yet. What's that like for you? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's wonderful, you know, having a mother that can push me and motivate me and direct me in the right direction, but also it is irritating because I am young, you know, and I want to do what I want to do. And as a mother, you know, it's in their nature to, you know, um, guide you. And sometimes it's like, okay, but I want to do my own thing. So it's like, uh, I don't know, it'd be back and forth. But overall, I mean, she's a mother. She's going to worry at the end of the day. That's what moms do. So it is what it is. This is a snapshot in time. That's where she is, right? <laughs> Mrs. Taylor is laughing. <laughs> Kayla, you pick it up. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Before we get to Kayla. <laughs> so, what happened? Did I do that? Okay. Okay. Kalicia and, 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 and Miss Event, I just need you to know that Kalicia is amazing. She she says what she's going to do and she does it. She keeps her word. She's got high standards. Bless her heart. And I tell you, coming to working with me is not easy. And I, I'm grateful that I don't have to be the bad cop anymore. Like not like I used to be because I was that one that's like, no. With the face, you're going to get it. You're going to get it right. You're going to do it right, okay? And you're going to be good at it, period, okay? So, no, you don't get a break. And sometimes I would be scared they're going to tell their mom and I'm going to get a phone call. And then I just tell mom, yes, no, she's going to get it right. I'm going to tell you what, I continue to be proud of Kalicia. Her honesty, her authenticity, her high standards, and she is all you. Now she may say, yeah, well, you know, my mom, but baby, she represents you well. I know, I, I'm just saying, I am proud of her. And I know that you are, and I am not always easy to please, okay? And she'll Thank let you. you, and she'll let you know, she wasn't too sure about me because I was letting her know, baby, you better get this right. <laughs> Mrs. Stella, I appreciate you so much. I want you to know she is, you know, so you are doing a fabulous job and she is, and she is, she is making you proud, despite how it may sound. You know what I mean? Because I've got a daughter too. They don't mind letting you know how they don't want to hear that. And then they turn around and do it. And they yes, do it well. Yes. And that's yes, what she's doing. <laughs> like she said tonight, she said, Mama, why did you do that? We're in Atlanta. <laughs> I may be out and about. I said, well, you better figure out a way to win this call. <laughs> oh, can you see that you face? At. That face looks... Hello? That's baby. right. And All right. Said, baby, I was worried, but she here. And okay, I love so, you so she was, when she saw my face, she was familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you, you got her picture, Sean? 
You asked, am I going to see your face? She showed her face. Hey, you we better than me. That's right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, she's amazing. And she just, you know, I'm just so proud of her. And I can't wait to see where she goes. If she, and as she continues with the standards that she set. And this is so wonderful. Now, as we go to uh, Dr. Kayla, because she sat in the classroom too. She wasn't happy about being there. See, it's funny, he didn't come to me. I just want you to know moms, they wasn't happy about being in my class. Too bad. <laughs> and Kayla, I don't know if she's gonna say, but every juncture, she said, Miss Estelle, Miss Estelle, okay. All right, so go ahead, Dr. Marshall. You can go on to Kayla. I can't almost forgot to ask Kayla. You as a young person, your mom wants you to do this. What was that like? Was it a fight mm -hmm. back? Was was it like a resistance? Was it like, you know, because I know I mean I got kids and I was a it kid. Wasn't, I don't want to say that it was resistance, but I did feel like it was something extra for me that she wanted me to do. In my mind, it felt like something for me to do so that I wouldn't get into stuff that she knew that I would get into, like doing things that I shouldn't be doing. So let me give her something extra to do. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to her now. And of course, after going through Omega, like I realized the benefits from it. Um, but I think that at the time I didn't look at it that way. Like I even brought my friend with me, like maybe what, three months in because I was taking Bust and Bart too every week. And um, especially when it got to our senior semester of high school, we had to go twice a week. So, I mean, when you're getting out of school and you gotta jump on a bar and you gotta jump on a bus and another bus and another bus and then do that same thing, um, headed back home, it's a lot to take a toll on you. Um, but I think by that point where I was doing um, two classes a week, by that point I was already fully invested, so. Um, it's understandable. It is understandable. And, and, and again, I said as much as this is an alive and free Omega story, it's a mother-daughter story. And when, there's a saying, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Mm -hmm. And Omega is just part of that village. Mm -hmm. And and when I look at the, the four of you, I, I I I just it just blows my mind to see how we were have been each a part of your village, um, and in the end, it's all about the results. So, uh, the four of you are alive. <laughs> four of you are free. The four of you are educated. The four of you are amazing, um, and I don't even know you know, where to start with, with, with what this, this whole process, being part of this process, you know, I'm just saying the results. Uh, and let's start with you, Kai, because people heard your story and you big time businesswoman. I mean, you like, <laughs> you, know, you're like you know, you sent me this picture, you, you, you running this business and I'm, you know, I, and, and for me, I just remember this little girl that came, right? And she is, she got, these issues came up and so on for her. And then she's down there at, at and, and you know, I'm lucky because as we go through this process, especially when you go to college, I'm the one that's in touch with you. You know, Dr. Martin needs some money. Dr. Martin said, Dr. Martin said, give my scholarship money. And so then to see the results uh, of the things you've been able to do with your life, even with that beginning that you had is, to me, that's, the proof is in the proof is in that. So just talk about a little about how things are for you now. And then we'll, you, we'll get to your daughters, both of your daughters, but go right ahead. Just share that with folks. So things are very good. Um, you know, it's amazing what a little investment in somebody will do, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, Dr. Marshall, back then, I would call you and be like, Dr. Marshall, I need a coat. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I got here and was like, I needed a coat. I, it was too cold. Uh, I think one or two times I called and begged you to help me buy Kayla a coat. You know, um, 
So I look back to those days and then I look at where I am now. So I'm an insurance broker. I've been a, uh, in the insurance industry for 16 years and I have a, an insurance uh, well, now brokerage. I had a farmer's insur insurance franchise for several years. Um, and so I'm an insurance broker and um, I have had that for 16 years. And then I opened a coffee shop um, in a city that I was the first and only black owned eating establishment uh, in the city and um, right in a suburb in Birmingham. And so I had that for six years, um, got tired of the employees because I had two different sets to deal with and then decided to, to sell that. So I sold the coffee shop about two years ago and took the money and flipped it and started a real estate development company. So I own quite a bit of real estate in downtown Birmingham. Uh, I actually, my newest purchase is a, a 200 year old two story building in downtown Birmingham. That's a fire station. And I'm renovating it to be my house, the entire <laughs> two stories. So whoever is listening, let me just tell you, this person right here who slept in cars and, and drove to Alabama and didn't know where I was going with two boxes in my cars and kissed my baby sitting right here who's the doctor. Goodbye and I'll see you later. You can do it. Dr. Marshall, you don't remember, but years, I remember when I was leaving and you said, because I you asked me why did I pick Alabama State? I didn't. Alabama State was the only university that would accept me. And I do want to make sure I say that because I've read HBCUs, because for kids like me that only took, barely got basic math done at high school, I didn't qualify to get anywhere else. But ASU took a chance on me and brought me up to speed. And that's what HBCUs do. Praise and the Lord. gave me the skills that I needed. If, if, if I can get here, <laughs> you, anybody can do it. I just wow. took the hustles that I, the hustling from the street that I knew. I used my education and I just became corporate. <laughs> that says so much about <laughs> How many times did I say? How many times have we heard that back then? If, 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 if you just flip that energy that you're using out on the block, you can run a corporation and male or female, obviously. <laughs> Wonderful. But, and daughter, go to Omega, go to Omega, go to Omega, go to Omega, go to Omega. Kayla, look at you. Just tell folks how you have done the village as you, how you have done. Well, Mrs. Stell was right. I call her every step of the way. <laughs> every time I venture into something new, I'm calling Mrs. Stell. Um, I came, I uh, went to University of Alabama at Birmingham and I got my nursing degree. Um, I moved back home and then I ended up coming back to Alabama for my master's in nursing education. So I'm also a clinical nurse educator. I have taught as an adjunct instructor for UAB School of Nursing. Um, and right before I graduated with my master's of science in nursing education in 2018, a full ride scholarship to Samford University landed in my lap for a doctorate of nursing practice. And so I am now a doctor. I have a, a specialty in nursing administration and um, I currently am a cardiac service line manager at one of the biggest hospitals in Birmingham. Um, and we just went through an alliance. So that's about to do big things between us and the university hospital. And currently I'm in transition. I, um, I have two offers on the table to elevate me in my career. And so I'm trying to just decide what I wanna do. Um, whether that be a director position or a system level manager for St. Vincent's um, Birmingham Health System. So, yep, that's that's what I'm doing right now. You said it, wait, so just roll, I'm just doing this and I'm just doing that. And I'm just doing <laughs> okay, so in my everyday life, though, it's really like, 
it's really busy. Like it's nonstop. Like the phone starts going off at like six o'clock. I got 60 people that report to me. So I'm saying it calmly right now because I'm just kind of at peace. I'm getting ready to go into a, another lane in my career, another turning point. Um, but you know, it, it's been, it's been, it's been a lot, especially with COVID. Um, I was flipping between day shift, night shift, trying to figure out where to route my associates, my associates getting COVID. Like it's, it has been a lot. Um, I think I'm probably just now to the point where I am starting to relax. Um, but like I said, I think that has a lot to do with me um, changing in my career path. That excites me. I'm always doing something new, doing something different, getting a certification in something, calling Mrs. Stell, telling her I need another letter of recommendation. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a writing sister for Kayla, okay? <laughs> for all my recommendations. Um, now it gets to the point where I'm just like, I send her a text message and tell her what's next because I'm, I was calling forever Mrs. Stell like every other six months it seemed like to tell her that I needed a recommendation for something different um but Mrs. Stell I do appreciate you because every time I've asked you you've always given me words of encouragement every time um and it just it just makes me value the significance and um my growth that I've I've achieved so far and me going to Omega to have that support system because it never fails. It doesn't matter when I call Mrs. Stell, those words of encouragement and support and wisdom are always going to come through before we get off the phone, a text, an email or something. So I really do appreciate you, Mrs. Stell. Thank you, baby. I'm going to share. I'm going to share about Kayla in the classroom. There was this <laughs> there was a spot where she sat. <laughs> right in front of the window. Back we always the window. where y'all sat. Do, 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 do you remember, Kayla? Yes, I do. And this was a particular class where we were watching one of those old movies. Those old movies, and we're breaking it down. And Kayla, at the time, had this boyfriend. I'm not going <laughs> to tell that story, but I will say it was a crazy boyfriend. And you know, sometimes we kind need of thing that moms would be worried about. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, she, you know, she just, you know, she just shared a little incident. And I am one who will just the kids will say, you just popped out, or I'll jump out. Yes. And Kayla shared that story and I jumped out. Wait a minute, hold on. And da 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 da. And I went on and on. And I want you to know that I think. After that particular, when Kayla came back, I wanted to know how the boyfriend was. <laughs> and I want you to know, mom, she said, he's not my boyfriend anymore. He gone. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Doing Steph, it. Yo, your words to me, I, I, I remember exactly what you're talking, to, <laughs> talking about. Your words were, you are not a hot commodity. <laughs> Do you know what that is? You are not an item to be bought or sold. And I was like, let me tell you, it never went away. It's always in the back of my mind. Hold up. Wait a minute. I popped out. And when she came back, she had started, she implemented the change immediately. And see, and when you know you've got somebody that will hear what you say, not just hear it, but implement it. Every yeah. time she calls, because she, she, did, she didn't just tell me about, I need a letter. No, Kayla went through something going through college. And I'm going to tell you what, that baby went through some rough times and yes. she made it. Yep. And it wasn't easy. And she yep. kept on going. And she yep. kept cr cr crazy car, crazy people. <laughs> it was just that baby went through and she wouldn't stop until she made it to the other side. Now, so Kayla, these decisions that you've got to make now, the same, I'm going to say it the way I say it, <laughs> the same God that brought you through will help you with this. You listen. You listen for that guidance. It doesn't come outside. It comes up from the inside. Okay? Because when you got two things at you, it's like, now what, now what, now what? <laughs> yeah. You know what to do. And you do what you've done and you listen 
better than you used to. And you follow that guidance. It will keep you. It will send you in the right direction. You will make it. You'll be all right. And it'll just, you know, it will be where God wants you to be doing more than you can imagine mm -hmm. and still able to take care of yourself. Cause you, I'm going to say this. I'm sorry. It's just coming to me. You need to take better care of yourself. You need to rest more. You need to have that time where you just either, I don't know where the water is, where you outside, but whatever <laughs> that thing is that you know you need that gives you, that, that refreshes you and gives you peace and lets you laugh loud and hard. And just, you need to do that more. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I know, I do. All right, baby, you just keep on praying. You will be led in the right direction. Yvette, right, talk that's... about where you are now from that time, uh, how you're doing, um, your turn. <laughs> Okay, well, right now I'm a current operations manager for a construction company that I've been with for over 13 years. I am also a foster parent in the Contra Costa area, but also been a foster parent. I receive kids from throughout the Bay Area. I also am a great mother, if I say so myself. <laughs> with um, raising my daughter as yes. well as my son. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Still. Um, and that's where I'm right now. Um, it's interesting that I am currently taking some insurance classes, looking to change, switch over industries, starting something different, branching out. It's time for a change within, I've been in construction industry for over 25 years. And this industry has really shed a lot of light on me as to how far that we as African-Americans can succeed, even mm -hmm. as small businesses, as well as employees within the construction industry, seeking to do something different. And I am going to succeed in my next venture. Kalicia, the reluctant one. <laughs> Um, it's, it, it is interesting because, see, Kayla's further along in her journey than you. You are still in college. Um, uh, how, have you, how have you done those first few years at Clark in your, at your mother's alma mater? How have you been doing? My first year was okay. My first semester was like, uh, I had like a B.1, I had like a B.97. Can't hear you, baby. We can't hear you. Start again. There you go. Wait. Okay, now we got you. Now we got you. One second, y'all. Can you hear me now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Yep. Yep. We can hear you okay. now. So my first year at Clark, my freshman year, it was okay. My first semester, it wasn't all that because I got a 2.97, I think. And for me, that's low because I have standards for myself. So it was okay. I didn't beat myself up. It was my first semester transitioning. Um, but the second semester, it was good. Sophomore year, we had the pandemic. You know, things shifted a lot, but it was good. I was surprised. Um, I had ended the year off with a, I think a 3.9 to 3.8 GPA. Yep. So that was good. And right now, junior year, my first semester, it was good. Second semester is kind of rocky. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of rocky right now, but I'm trying to get it together. So does I see all of your grades? Because, you mm -hmm. know, I Crazy to send you the money. <laughs> so, um, every time I see your grade, you're on the dean's list. I was like, what the, did, what, what the? So I don't know what you thought you were going to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal for myself. I always try to, you know, make it there. But like during the semester, it kind of be slipping sometimes. But at the end, I always try to finish it off strong. And you're the only one out of this group, all of us here, who have had to do it through COVID. 
through a very different time. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and what's that been like? Um, it's kind of it gets tricky sometimes because you know Atlanta they're ahead of us. No, I mean Cali, we're ahead of them. So for them, our time is like out here. They're due at eleven fifty nine, but our time is eight fifty nine. So sometimes assignments get mixed up, or if a professor has a test at a certain time, sometimes that set me back because I get the times mixed up. But I mean, I'm pretty. I get the hang of it. It's okay though. You, you know, as uh, you sound so much like her, it's scary. <laughs> Your voice is the same. Hers is a little different with the, with the lilt, the intonation. It's like, oh, I'm back in time. Yeah, and I really want to say, you know, I don't think you give your, well, it, it may not be good, but Mrs. Stell was right. You deserve a lot of credit. In fact, all the students who deserve a lot of credit for, this is unprecedented. Uh, you know, your mom was out on the yard. Uh, <laughs> Kayla was out on the yard. Kaidi was out on the yard their whole career. And you've had to adapt to this. This It's never been anything like this, you know, in 100 years. And there's anything really been like this, because even the Spanish student, it was different. And keep your eyes on the prize and stay focused. And, and you know, I would get your grades and I would text you back, girl, you made the dean's list. So, um, you deserve a lot of credit for just doing great during this time. And I, I'm praying that your senior year, you will be back. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you and Mrs. Still. And I want to say thank you, Mrs. Still, what you had to say. I really appreciate it because you know, we all know Mrs. Still, you was hard. It's hard to impress you. So that really meant a lot and it really made my night. Um, Senior year, honestly, I'm not looking forward to being on campus. I mean, I kind of miss it, but I do plan on moving to Atlanta and I feel like living out here and going to school. I mean, I could bounce it out if I had to, but I kind of prefer online, honestly, mm -hmm. which is surprising, but right. yeah. Yeah, I've heard a couple people say that. What's in, you've heard the accomplishments of these, these three women here. What are, what's your plans for the future? What do you want to go into? Exactly where I was going. Honestly, right now, I don't even know. The pandemic kind of like shifted me. I had just recently started my business. So I'm kind of like on the more entrepreneur style, like don't work for no one. But um, I do hope my business, it will be a six figure business. That's for sure. <laughs> but um, I had got a camera recently. So I do plan on getting into photography as well. And I do like editing. So I do like editing for um, events or something, but not editing for films or anything. What's your major? I can't remember that. I can't Mass remember. media. <clears throat> yeah. So when you talked about mass media originally, I could see you on television. That's what I'm saying. Everybody yeah, because you've got, you got, you've got, you've got. Especially with the eyelashes, girl. You can really no, Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm old school. <laughs> I, you don't I, like I the would, lashes. You know, I, I I like for, I mean, I don't want it to look like a creature on your, walking across your face, but you know, that's just me. Remember, I'm the old lady who doesn't get it. So, you know, you know, I, you, so yeah, but, but you've got the look, you've got the personality and you've got the voice. Thank you. I you can know. see myself on TV, but I don't know what it would be. I don't know. Well, you know what? Your gift will make room for you. Absolutely. All right. As it has. Just keep working them. hard. Be on the lookout for the opportunities that show up. And when it peaks, that's something that shows up and you can feel it, then pay attention to that. Got okay. You. Listen to me and Mr. Stell. We're trying to tell you something good, young lady. Okay. We're okay, not going to steer you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't tell you what, what a, th a thrill it is for, you know, for, for me um, to have been with all of you every step of the way. And no matter what happens, we'll be there. Because, you know, we're going to be family forever. Uh, yes. It really hits home when it's your child. It, 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 it's just nothing like it when it's your child. And when, 
you know, I first found out what Kayla was Katie's child. I was like, oh my God, her daughter is Katie's daughter. And when I found out that, you know, Kalicia was Yvette's daughter, oh my God, it's her daughter. And to have an impact on two generations of a family, it's just, it's, it's, it just, it, it, you, you, you don't think of it that way. Cause you know, with, with us, it was like every Tuesday, you just make this Tuesday happen, this Tuesday happen, you know, we gonna, we gonna make this happen, make that happen. But, and then there are milestones that hit you. And I think, you know, we got the first hundred grads or the, you know, we had the first year we had, but, but the, the milestone that hit me as hard as any was, man, we hit, we did the family. And the most important thing is in the world is family. Um, Guy, mm -hmm. how you feel about your daughter? And what oh, man. Do? I'm so proud of her. <laughs> I mean, like I said, today I talked just this afternoon, I was at her house and I'm like, wow. Hold this, on, this hold on, wait. Did you say at her house? The third one, and she you know what I'm saying. One. She yes. I just, the third yes. one, she I just want you to know from the ground that I am paying attention. Thank you. Okay, my apartment's on the second floor. <laughs> now, let me just say that I, I'm just I'm just gonna jump in here. I heard Kaidi say insurance brokerage, and I heard Yvette say interested in insurance. So. Kaidi, I'm going to ask if you would do me a favor, if you would write down a list of need, needs to know regarding insurance brokerage and, and Yvette, give her your email address, put it in the chat. If you would send her a list of needs to know regarding insurance and insurance brokerage, and I don't know if that's going to make a difference for you event but just to get you thinking and open for whatever god's got for you in this next journey okay A absolutely i just that, wanted to say mrs that. Stell, you are on point as always oh, and i was definitely going to reach out to my, my omega sister that i just met that i love and i don't know her but i love her <laughs> With, okay i just sent my email to you actually and I'm about to send mine. So send me your contact. Yes, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Put it in the chat. Let's we make are that family. We if are you family. Ready, she owns property. Where the property at? Is it all in Alabama? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm, I'm I, 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 I'll trial. just visit. <laughs> all right. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you, Katie. So just finish with you talking about your daughter. Cause I just, cause I'm gonna have to just get a chance to talk about I'm her. sorry, thank you. But no, no, that's fine. Cause that was, the, that, that's how we go. So I, you know, you, you this is your baby, right? And, and, and you, man, I know how I feel about my kids. So I know how you feel yours and you, the worry and to see what you've been able to do. And then Kayla, I want you to talk about your mom, how you feel about your mom. So, um, Wow, Dr. Marshall, sometimes I just, I, it's like pinch me. It's like pinch me. Like we, we, I was at her house today and we were planting some stuff and no, in a hundred million years, I couldn't have, I couldn't have written a better sunset story for myself and her, you know, because it took a lot of work on her behalf and my behalf to bring our relationship back together because of you know my instability for so many years and so to see her and you know mrs mrs sell you are exactly right kayla i don't because i have two other children but kayla listens she does and so she has a thing with her brother and sister that she says you know what when you need to know you better dial 1-800 call mom <laughs> And so for her to even see me as wise in that way or to, to acknowledge, I mean, and to take, you know, that's what all moms want. We want, we don't want our kids to make the same mistakes we did because we want them to get up the ladder faster than we could, yeah. you know? And so the fact that she listened 
and that she 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 got you know she was driven and and it does i mean i there's so many sometimes we'll be talking and i'll say you know i remember the days where we didn't have no hot water and we ain't have no no stove and and we would go to the corner store i pick her up from school uh and we go to the corner store with the EBD called EBT and food stamps and buy sandwich, you know, buy sandwich or we have to make, you know, some slices of pizza, and, you know, make it happen. And so to see her now, you know, like it just, it, it make, it's got my eyes watering. Like I just, you know, it's like, okay, thank you, Lord. You know, my prayers were answered. Thank you. So, and I say, you know, I just said today we 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 were while we were at her house, um, I was telling her brother and sister. I said, you know, if the Lord decided to that I needed to come home now, I will be okay because I know Kayla would would make sure things were done the way that they should be, so that they would have prosperous branches, and that's what you know why I love Omega so much because you literally changed the trajectory of my family line, like literally just changed it. And even my other two children who don't know Omega, don't really know anything other than how did mom get here? Some group, some retired teacher, some folks sent her, that's all they know, sent her to Alabama. You know, I've been here 28, 27 years. And so, you know, they don't really know, but they have drive and dreams and, you know, they're like, they want to, they want to own a business. My 20 year old, I wanted this. And, you know, and I know that if it wasn't for Omega, that wouldn't have been happening. I would have still been, I would have been in East Oakland and, you know, who knows? Kayla might be the only one on this call. Kayla. Well, what do you think about your mom? Oh, man. So it's been a long, like, it's been a long time, like a long journey, I should say, with my mom and me. Um, like, I will say that initially growing up, like going through high school, and maybe that first, um, first time I went to college with my bachelor's, our relationship was not always the best mom and daughter relationship, but like, um, it, it almost was like, it was like a struggle. Like we would take a lot of steps forward and then we would take two steps back, like over just different stuff. Um, we tried a lot of things. We tried counseling, we tried talking with each other. And um, I don't know, like, it, it's weird. Like I, um, I've always been proud of my mom. Like I know where my mom comes from. I've always been proud of my mom. And a lot of people say I'm just like my mom. So no matter what like was going on, like with our relationship, I was always hearing you're just like your mom. Um, but I, my mom has like this resilience to her. She has this drive, like she's so business minded and I'm okay to be like my mom. Like it's, it's totally okay with me. Um, but I will say that during this journey, um, and now let's say I'm 29 now. So I would say that maybe the last two years, our relationship took like a, not a 360, but I think maybe we were in church and our relationship, it, it really just started shifting. Like I always was 1-800 call mom because I knew mom had the answer. And regardless if I wanted to hear it or didn't want to hear it, I knew I needed to talk to her. But she literally in the last two years has become like my best friend. And I think with church and then I had something major happen in my life and she was there. Like, I remember I didn't even want to tell her, like I was crying. I didn't want to tell her, but I told her and her going with me to do, um, to go through those trials and those tribulations and what I thought was like my worst time in my life through all of my success it really changed like our relationship and like yeah my mom gets on my nerves sometimes but like used to be my mom used to That's really our job but now it's like <laughs> it's like it's like she gets on my nerves in a different way it's not like yep. how it used to be like 
I don't know, just that one incident where I was in that rough patch, it mm. just, it just changed the way I saw her. Like I saw her as my mom. Like she is not going to go nowhere. She's not going to let me fall. She's not going to let me fail. She's going to tell me to fix my crown on my head and get up. <laughs> like, and I knew it then. And ever since then, like my mom is like my best friend. Like I get up sometimes, well, not with, with COVID and being in the hospital. Sometimes it's been kind of off and she'll call and be like, where are you? I haven't talked to you. I'm right here. But like on days like today, like, can we plant my coffee flower? And I made breakfast and, you know, it's days where I wake up and I just talk to my mom for a whole hour or two and I'm just still like, relaxing. She, she really, it, it's really changed. I will say that I never thought that I would, I never thought that there would be a moment where I would say that my mom's like my best friend. Um, just because my mom, she, my grandparents raised me. And so I never thought there would be a moment where I would say that because there was just so many feelings that I had towards her. Like I was always proud of her, but it was just different because she wasn't here the whole time. Um, but I think like those last two years, it just kind of set the tone. I mean, I've become more spiritual and I even pray for my mom, like her success and everything. And that's kind of, that was kind of my aha moment. Like I had a long drastic prayer for my mom and I was like, that's my friend. Like, she not gonna let me, she not gonna let me fall. I'm gonna say to you, Kayla, that through the years, I knew that you always loved your mom. You all, you always loved her. Kaidi, she always loved you. Even when it was tough, questionable, the love you had for your mother always came through. And the awareness of that love, it hit you the last couple of years, but that love was always there. Yeah. It, <sighs> Been a, it's been a long time. I, I Like I said, I never thought I would be here. I tell people all the time, like, you know, that I have some friends that they weren't raised by their mom, but like their mom is in their life or maybe um, like their mom, they don't talk to them anymore. Like they grew in the house with them, but then they're just always bickering. I'm always telling my friends that are like that, like, just give it time. Just give it time. Like, I promise you, just give it time. Say what you need to say respectfully but just give it time because some, you know, there's going to come a time where you're going to realize that you need your mom. Yes. That's, that's perfect. Yes. Perfect. Because and Kaidi, baby, God has a way of working it out. You just can see what happens with our kids and I, and I, and, and without telling the story. Okay. What happens with our kids, there are situations that, we as parents find ourselves in and they decide that we feel a certain way but because we consistently love and we show in ways that they may not want to hear it, it may not look like it sound like it but when they discover that we are not going away we are not going to let you fall and we're going to be there no matter what baby when the wake up time comes you know, you, yes, I absolutely understand. You just keep doing what you can't help but love and be there and do what you need to do, even when it's hard, even when it's hard. And then our kids discover, yeah, that's my mom. That's my mother. <laughs> and that's, that's, because we got a, a young one here who may not be here yet. He, you better talk about your daughter. Alicia is a very strong young lady, I must say. Her and her, I mean, this young lady yeah. has just, her and her brother have been there for me through a lot. From losing my brother. Well, she wasn't born when I lost my brother, but my, but my son was. But from losing my parents, to losing their dad and the support at five years old when I lost my dad this young lady just rubbed my back and it's like mom God wanted him it's okay 
for a five-year-old to say that with strength, that gave me the strength to get through. I'm so proud of Khaleesi and all of her accomplishments when she lost her father, just to continue to move forward and still to be an honor roll student in high school. It shows her excellence and her strength as a young lady. Yes. And of course, when she comes from a strong line of black women, she can't help but be a strong black woman herself. So anything that she encounters in her life, I know that she was she will endure. And when she came to me and told me about her starting her business and her mindset for entrepreneurship, I just, I was ecstatic. It meant a lot to me, you know, like, wait a minute, you want to do what? You creating your own website? Oh, okay, girl, go ahead then. God is good and she's going to be okay. And I'm confident and I'm happy in the way that I've raised her to know that she will be all right as long as she keep God first and she know he is the head of her life. Felicia, talk about your mom. Um, I love my mom so much. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm using the bathroom. So can you guys come back to me? What did she say? Can you hear me? <laughs> Yes. I'm hear. using the bathroom right now. Oh, that's a first on the show. <laughs> I may have to throw this one to Mrs. Dale. <laughs> oh my God. Say about oh, Mrs. Dale. <laughs> so Dr. Marshall, let me just be honest. Yesterday, Kalicia says to me, mom, why did you agree to this? I said, well, young lady, I came to you when Dr. Marshall called me. When he was on the phone with me, I came to you and I told you what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Well, mom, we're in Atlanta right now. I said, mm -hmm. and what does that mean? <laughs> if I can take time out of my schedule <laughs> to get on the call, so can you, right? Right. So I am just... <laughs> I love Kalicia. That's 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 right, girl. girl. Tell right now, I am indisposed. Miss <laughs> Estelle, what are we gonna do with her? Hey, she's fine. <laughs> she yours. I've given her. To, I've given her to you. <laughs> I'm fine. gonna let you continue but this see, call, right? Now. But see, she knows. In my class, you got 60 seconds. Your time is up, girl. Come on, finish up. Oh my god! And come on back to the call. Oh. And see, and here's the thing, I've got to say that I was the one when Dr. Marshall said this is what he was going to do. I, it, it's, it's my fault, Kalicia <laughs> and Yvette, because I said, what about Kalicia and her mom? <laughs> All right, baby, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to wash my hands. So All right. Wait one second. <laughs> Oh my God! You know they watch these and uh, it, we we actually we, in the first half hour we looked at where the downloads of the show or people see it live from and uh, you know it's all over the place. It's New Zealand and it's South Africa and it's Russia and it's Europe and uh, so when they when they when they see the show whenever they go see it they're gonna hear. I'm in the bathroom <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> I guess this is what live gets you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is what live gets you. And, and, and just gave the signal that she can make a modification. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> can modify that. <laughs> well, while we're waiting for Khalees. Hey, Ooh, Jesus, thank you. Okay, I'm there. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> to talk about. Hey, pretty girl. The thing was, right. what do you think you talk about your mom? <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I love my mom so much. I really have the best mother hands down, even though she gets on my last nerve. But I feel like I'm at that age where it's like we kind of clash a little bit, but not too much. Um, but I love my mom. She's so strong and independent. She just trying to do everything for me. Like, she feels like she owes me the world, but I feel like I owe her the world. But I got the best mama. I love her today. To life. To life. 
That's a better term. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's been great. I I know, and you I, I know you, you had to get off early, and you, both of you said, but this has been. I mean, I couldn't think a better way to wrap up Women's History Month. I I, I just it's, it, it's just for me it's perfect. Um, like I said, just seeing it for you is is I don't know. I don't. I mean, it's just beautiful and. I guess the one thing I will say to all of you, and I know Leah Sill wants to say something too, is thank you for trusting your children with us. I want to say that to mom, both moms. And then I'll follow up by thank you for trusting your lives with us. Because, you know, if you if you hadn't come and taken that step, then this relationship would have never happened. And then Believing that it was so beneficial, then you you trusted your your own child with us. It's just I, I I'm eternal. I'm just grateful, just grateful. Um, and like I said, the results are what they are. And I, I I'm so proud of all of you. I can't wait to you know when Kalisha graduation comes and we get that another picture up on the wall. <laughs> you know that's that's that's. The Wall of Fame, when we can finally get back into the club, hopefully soon. But uh, they have all four of you up there. And I walk in that room. Sometimes I just walk in that room by myself and look. And I say, look at here, look at here, look at here. You're all alive and free and educated. So thank you for the time tonight. Really, it's wonderful. Lady E? Alive, free, educated, brilliant, powerful, beautiful, transformative, change makers gifts and blessings to all those that you come in contact with. A wonderful example of womanhood, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. ladies, mothers, sorors, friends, sisters, all that you are, all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Thank you for being a light this Women's History Month. Thank you. We are so proud of you. So proud of you, Kaidi. I see you on that wall, that little girl, and you sit back. Oh my goodness sake, this woman who has made such a huge difference. And then Yvette, the mom, and the mom, and the mother, the and all that you've done and are doing, because changing and working with young people, that's not easy. Mm -hmm. Somebody else's mm -hmm. children, that's not easy. And Dr. Kayla, working with other people to help them save other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And then my sweet pea in the bathroom. <laughs> and all that God has in store for each of you. I am so blessed to have this opportunity. Let, 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 I, I, let me say it to both. Uh, Kayla and to um, Kalicia. What's going to be fascinating is one day when you have your own children <laughs> and decisions you don't have to make. And let, let me tell you the first thing as you go through that journey, let me tell you you're gonna, what you're going to rely on. You're going to rely on your mom. <laughs> you, you picked up from them and the thoughts you learned from them. and you know, it'd be beautiful, you know, that, so this motherhood thing, number one, number one, number one, number one. Thank you for doing a wonderful- So proud of uh, you. We're proud of you. Love you all. Love you too. Uh, go leave. Love you too. <laughs> Bye night, everybody. Good Love night. Guys. Good Bye, night. everyone. Bye. 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 Good night, everyone. I love you all. Good night. Love you. Love you too, baby. Okay.